how to get massively better results for your AI art. Hello, my friends, how are you doing? So I had a long discussion with Bella, who is a very skilled AI art creator on Playground, and she has shared her workflow with me and tricks on how to get better results. Also a shout out to Vinci because they often work together and have found out a lot of these tricks in cooperation with each other. Now, one of the basic tricks here is actually to get started on a page like Playground, because first of all, you don't need your own hardware. You can generate a thousand images per day for free. But more importantly, you have here this gallery of really impressive works that you can use to inspire yourself and to get some hints, but also to click on these images and you can see the prompt, negative prompt, the settings that have been used. And often you can click also here on the remix button to start with these settings. Now you have to use this with caution because when we click on this image here, you see that it says directly in the prompt will not produce the same result when remixed. This means that the creator has hidden the original prompt. But the good thing here is that most of the creators still leave part of the prompt here. So you can still look into what is written here to get better results and learn from their techniques. An easy way to test if the prompt is real or not is to click on the image. When you have a remix button here, click on that remix button. This will load all of the settings, sometimes not the image dimension. So you have to click here to have the right dimensions and click on generate. If this generates the exact same image, you can be sure that this is the right prompt that has been used for that image. So now you have a perfect starting point to look at the prompt, analyze it, but also tinker around with it by changing individual words and see how the result is changing. Of course, for getting more variations, you want to scroll down here on the right side and click on randomize each number to get new variations, which will turn the seed to a random seed. So when I turn this on without changing anything else and click on generate again, I'm getting a very different result. You can also slide here the column to see more images at the same time up to eight images, which I find too small. So keep it up to three, for example, which still gives you a good result. But now let's talk about how to actually refine these results. So one of the techniques Bella is using is that she's writing a basic starting prompt just to get the composition and the elements in the image. For that, what she's also doing is on the generation page, you can set here the number of images and she sets them to four so that each time she clicks on generate four images are created. I will do this now with one of my own images here. So click on remix. I set this to four images and then click on generate. So now you can see that we have generated four different images and they are considerably different because a lot of what AI does is very random. So you can either decide on taking one of these four images or just keep clicking on the generate button to get other compositions. If you found a composition you like, you can mouse over this, click here on the plus and select use image to image. This will load the image down here in this section and automatically set it to 30 as the image strength. Now with that as a basis, we still have the prompt negative prompt and all of the settings loaded quite the same. So when I click on generate now, it will generate four images for me, but they are all based on that exact composition. And when you compare them, they have significant differences. Some of them look much better and some of them don't look better. So you can see here that the flowers and the hair are different and also the clothing is a little bit different. For these two, you can see that one of them actually has a painted background, which can also be a nice detail you want to have. On top of that, don't forget that you can always change the prompt, the negative prompt, but you can also load filters here, which are not embeddings. As I originally thought, these are actually dream booth trained models. So you can also select those and see what kind of results you get with this. For example, let's click here on analog diffusion and click on generate again. And you can see that the results we get are quite different and compared to these results and compared to the results before, these results are now much more photorealistic. Now, of course, what you can do here is that you take one of these images, click again on the plus and use this again for image to image. 
So now this has been loaded down here. And again, we can change the settings, the filter and the prompt and click again on generate. And you can see that again, the result has changed based on our settings. So you can go deeper and deeper with each step. This will help you improve your results a lot. And the trick on using an image as a base will give you much more control over the output. So you can finally tune the results you want to have with the settings, the prompt and the models you're using on the image. Now it's important to note that you can actually do the exact same thing with Invoke, but also with Automatic 1111. So with Invoke, what you want to do is to write your prompt here as normal and then put the negative prompt into square bracket. And you can actually put the complete negative prompt into one square bracket if you want to. Now in Invoke, for example, you would click here and send image to image then it's loading into this mode with all of your settings and the prompt the same. So you can still change all of that. You can also load a different model up here if you want to. Down here is the image strength that you can set and just click on invoke. And you can see that this also will create a variation of your original image that might have more interesting details and that you have a lot of control over. Another thing that is very important to do here is of course to play around with the prompt. So I would suggest to you to start by exchanging individual words. So you can see that this prompt starts with the word Rococo. So let's replace that by the word modern. Click on generate and you can see that we get a quite different result. Now let's try this again with the word elegant. And again, you can see that we have introduced a slight change to the image. Now by playing around with these words, you can fine tune the image without changing the composition. And this is the huge benefit of this method because it will give you a lot more control and make it much easier to reach the results you actually want to have. Of course, also don't forget that down here you have a mask that you can paint onto the image to replace certain parts. For example, we can draw here at that area to replace that crown. But also keep in mind that this mask is not going to work with all of the filters on Playground. Of course, over on Invoke, you can use the mask with any model that you have loaded into your Invoke AI. But here for the mask function, you actually have to send the image to the unified canvas. So it looks like this. Here you have to select the brush, set it to mask mode, and then you can mask out an area. And of course, now you have to change the prompt to the text of what you actually want to change. And now this is painting sunglasses into the image. Down here, you can either accept the result you get or you can discard that result. And over here with the amount of images, you can actually set multiple images so that with these arrows here, you can switch between the results and just keep the one you like the best. Now here comes some of my tricks I want to share with you because you don't actually have to start with an image from the AI. You can also go to a page like Pexels where you can download photos that can be freely used. Inside of Invoke for the image to image render, you have this symbol here to upload an image. Click on that, load the image. So now we have the photo here and it's also shown here on the right side. But if I click now on Invoke, this is using my prompt and all of my settings to create an image based on that a photo. Now the huge benefit here is that a photo already has a lot of things set up for me, especially a composition and a body posing that might be complex to reach when using text to image prompts. So this is actually also a good starting point that at the same time gives you a lot of ability for variations. Another thing I want to point out here to you when using this method is that this seems to work specifically well when you use the sampler K Euler or just Euler, but in this case with 50 steps, because usually you would use 40 steps or less, but this often gives a worse result with the prompt. It's not staying as close to the prompt, which is surprising. So with these 50 steps, you often get a very good result. 
And then using the same 50 steps for your image to image render will also help you to get highly detailed and accurate results for these image to image renders. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.